Number Discontinued. Adapted by Barry Campbell from the novel Sorry, Wrong Number by Margaret Simpson. With Julian Curry, Neville Jason, Joan Matheson, Valerie Murray, Tammy Ustinoff, and Benjamin Whitrow. Number Discontinued. Last night. Get anything interesting? Oh, uh, not really. Fairly routine, most of it. Morning, Lola. Morning, Roman. Head injuries and fractures, mostly. I thought the ambulances never stop. A busy night, huh? Train derailment, big one. So, it proves one thing, once and for all, just how good acute repair units are. How about you? What news from your department? Oh, nothing much. One tramp admitted pneumonia. <laughs> Some people have all the luck. Do you mean me or the tramp? You, of course. Nice cushy number, eh? Social medical work. Oh, SM units do have their uses, you know, James. They take the pressure off us, for example. Thank you. We also look after your quietly forgotten failures when all the fuss has died down. Cripples, the chronic sick, the old, the disabled, the lame brain. Oh, yes, they have their uses, all right. It's sad uh, this morning, aren't we? No, you're right. They have a place in the scheme of things, just as... Sorry, Roman, mustache. Just remember something. Oh, but I want I'll to... let him go. Trouble with social medicals, they've got an inferiority complex. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Yvette. How's our new patient? Mr. Singh? <laughs> Mr. Singh is fine, just fine. I'll just have a look at him. Good God, you shaved his head. He looks like something out of a cartoon. Well, he was trying to tear out his drip, and anyway, I couldn't get a comb through his hair. It's full of nits. I see, fair enough. Well, let's have a look at you, old chap. Mm -hmm. Now the chest. Mm -hmm. Yes, coming along nicely. Strictly speaking, he should be over the road in acute repair. Yes, I mean, luckily for him, they were too busy last night. I reckon he was a bit unsavoury for Ruleman's liking. You know the routine. These tramps, nothing but trouble, old boy. Anyway, he hasn't got a number, so why bother? That's all very well, Doctor, but he hasn't got a number. So what are we going to do about it? Well, I told you we'll give him Mr Singh's number. The ethnic origins bit is going to take some explaining. Mr. Singh was a fat old Indian gentleman who died last week. Yeah, well, it'll only be for a little while, just until a more appropriate number turns up. Look, Johnny, I know you try to help these people, but how long is it going to be before the authorities catch up with you? We haven't had any trouble so far. We? You! You've been lucky, that's all. One query from the Irregularity Department at Data Information. That you wriggled out of. Dear sir, please explain why this person appears to have changed sex. <laughs> and what did you reply? Yes, well... Hormone treatment, that's what. And we're damn lucky that we're not all in jail. Well, what else can we do? But it's only for the time being. And how do you explain the ethnic origins difference? Well, there just aren't any other numbers available to us at the moment. Okay. So what? So until there are, the new patient is Mr. Singh. You'll be sorry. Evening, Lola. Oh, hi, Ronald. Sorry I had to dash this morning. I... Oh, it's quite all right. Uh, by the way, we've got someone over the way that might interest you. Head injury, car accident. Oh, really? Round the twist or someone I could help? <laughs> Round the twist. Just your cup of tea. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid we've got nowhere to put him just at the moment. Oh, I don't want you to take him. No, no, he's not material for you. I just thought you might like to come up to the unit and see him. Yes, indeed. In Invited to inspect a patient in ARU. He must be special. He is. Ah, first things first. You recognize him? Well, I can hardly see him for bandages. You don't know him? I don't think so. Should I? Who is he? Chap called Nemerson. Means nothing. What are his chances? Well, he's been in a deep coma since yesterday, but he's beginning to lighten nicely. Well, what makes you think I should know him? Come with me. We'll go to my office. Ah, a nice little place. Yeah, we do our best. These your kids? Oh, <laughs> the photograph. Yes, the wife and three little ones. Lovely. You've written their numbers on the photo. Oh, yes, can't be too careful. Anyway, I think you'll find these snapshots much more interesting. Just take a look at this one. That's curious. One of the figures has a circle round his head. And what's this writing? I thought you'd find it interesting. Eliminate. Now take a look through these. But go on, the... you'll see. Mm-hmm. Young couple. Girl in a bikini. 
couple by the sea. Wedding photograph. Wedding? Good God, I know these people. This one's me. Exactly, I thought so. I said to myself, that's Lawler from across the way. But I don't... Tell me, who are the other people in the photograph, the ones who've been ringed? Well, it's Guy Luscombe's wedding. I was his best man. There's Guy and Barbara and the bridesmaid. Ah, yes. The two people who've been ringed are Barbara's parents. Derek, I think he was called. I wonder why. What the hell? Undesirables. Eliminate. Well, I'll be damned. You'll have to get in touch with these friends of yours. But of course you'd know if there's been any funny business, wouldn't you? Funny business? I doubt it. No, I haven't kept in touch. Send off his national number to data information control. Well, I don't think I've got his national number. Best man at his wedding and you don't have his number? Well, I thought you might help me on this. Well, I'm sorry. But anyway, I'll, I'll have a look through my papers tonight. I have an idea they sent me a, a change of address card or something. I think they went to live in Scotland. I'll see if I can find it. Oh, by the way, have you got a note of this chap's number anywhere? I shouldn't really let you have it, you know. Why ever not? Oh, very well. It's here. Right. Let's see. 63 N E M oblique 30582 oblique M93D. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. Yes? Johnny, Mr. Singer's pulled out his grip again. You told me to call you. Oh, and by the way, Dr. Williams sent over the x-ray report and thing. TB, I'm afraid. His lungs are covered with shadows. Oh, all right. I'll be right over. Oh, Yvette. Uh, can you take a look in my desk and see if you can find a change of address card for some people called uh, Luscombe? Okay. Yvette, you're an angel. Mm. In ARU, we don't ask ward sisters to do jobs like that. No, I'm sure you don't in ARU. Uh, sorry, Ruben, must that. Isn't uh, Singh that old Indian we sent you? I thought he'd die. Must have improved no end to pull out his drip. I must pop over and take a look at him sometime. Uh, no, uh, no, you better not do that. He's still very confused. Uh, it might get him muddled up. Oh, well, you know best. All the same, I should have liked to have seen him. Yvette? Where's Mr. Singh? Your sister's not here, Doctor. <laughs> and he's under the bed. Under the bed? Whatever for? Hello? Hello, Mr. Singh? You, you want the wire off that mess? Someone could slip on that. What are you doing under the bed, Mr. Singh? He, he's sheltering there. He, he thinks the ceiling's caving in. Oh, I see. He's mad, of course. I mean, the bed wouldn't save him if it didn't come down. You'd, you'd be surprised. Mr. Singh, I want to ask you something. What? Let me see your head. That's better. Now, those scars on your forehead, they're chicken pox scars, no, aren't they? No, I'm, I'm not saying I, I refuse to comment on the matter. When did you have chicken pox? <laughs> now you're in the thing. You know I had it. You know all about me, you and your cronies. You go and look it up in your, your fancy files. You ask the chap in charge. Now, look, there's no one in charge. Oh, you see, if they are chicken pox scars, then... Look, uh, Mr. Singh, in adults, chicken pox can cause shadows on your lungs, and... and... Don't, you, don't you think I don't know what you're up to? You're trying to put one over on me! You're doing me in and pretending it's natural causes! No, I'm not. I'm just trying to save transferring you to another hospital. Is everything all right? Where's Singh? He's here under the bed. The ceiling's caving in. Oh, I see. Come along now. Out you come. Come on. Come on, Mr. Singh. <laughs> Now, into bed. There's a good boy. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. What's going on? Well, if he's got TB, I'd have to transfer him to another hospital. I see. With a false number. Ethnic origins, I told you. Now, what are you going to do? Well, I'm pretty certain he hasn't got TB. I think it's just some calcification caused by chicken pox. You hope? Well, anyway, we'll see. He's a funny old stick, isn't he? I'm rather fond of him. Well, most of the time he's like a tramp, but sometimes, just sometimes, he sounds like a civil servant or something. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Wonder where he's from. Where do any of them come from? Oh, by the way, you know you asked me to look in your desk for that address? Mm -hmm. Fine job for a ward sister. <laughs> well, I found it. That's where I was just now. Oh, great. Any phone number with it? Yeah. Something important or just amorous? Important? Well, it could be. I don't know. Just looking up some old friends, really. I was best man at their wedding. Says you. <laughs> Thanks, Eva. I'll just go and ring them now. Beat me if you want, I think. Sure will. Hello? Who is it? Hello, 
Hello, Barbara. Uh, I don't know if you'll I don't know if you remember me. It's it's Johnny. Johnny? Johnny who? Well, I was best man at your wedding. Oh, oh Johnny Lawler. Hello. Uh, hang on, I'll get Guy. Oh, uh, just a minute, Barbara. I Johnny, this is a surprise. How are you? I'm fine, fine. How are you? <laughs> fine. Great. I just thought I'd ring, uh, keep in touch, you know. Yeah? I came across that card you sent me. And... Yeah, well, it's great to hear you again. <laughs> uh, look, Johnny, you must come and see us. Oh, well, uh, You I... must. Look, we've got a smashing place here. There's plenty of room. You'll love it. When can you come? The sooner the better. Well, I I'm off duty next weekend. Well, that's actually. fine. All Saturday. Next weekend it is. All right. You'll, uh, you'll be alone? Yep, all alone. <laughs> Well, great to hear from you again. We'll see you next week, then, eh? OK. Guy, uh, just before you go, yeah? there's something I wanted to ask you. Yeah? Well, I came across a picture of your wedding the other day. That's oh. that's really what made me think of getting in touch again. Uh, are you all well? Yeah, fine. And um, Barbara's parents, they're well, too? Hello, Guy? Johnny, you do know, of course, that Barbara's mother died. No, I didn't. I'm sorry. Yes, it was about five years ago. But it was all rather upsetting, and her father went abroad. But why are you so interested? Have you been hearing some gossip? No, no, I'm just, just interested, that's all. I, I didn't know. Yes, well, it, oh, look, well, I've got to go, Johnny. Uh, see you at the weekend, then, okay, eh? Okay, right. We can swap news over dinner. Right. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Guy. Thanks. It's really terrific to see you again. <laughs> what are you doing right up here? It's, it's a bit deserted, isn't it? More coffee, Johnny. Guy? Is that your generator outside in the garage? That monstrous <laughs> primitive apparition? <laughs> yes. I say, darling, I think something a little harder than coffee's called for. Uh, Johnny, what do you say to a drop of malt? Huh? Well, <laughs> I don't drink as a rule, of course. Oh. But uh, seeing as we're celebrating, that really was a terrific dinner, Barbara. Barbara? So, what made you suddenly want to look us up? Oh, I don't know, really. I... Well, I was always sorry we lost touch, and, and then I came across that wedding photograph. You know, you, me, your parents, old guy there. It brought back memories. And so, here I am. Oh, I, I believe... I believe your mother died. Guy said... Oh, yes, yes. I didn't even know we'd given you a picture of the wedding. Oh, that darling, don't you think the... Uh, well, I'll just go and see for some things. Clearing up. And... <laughs> well, let me help. No, it's all right. Manage and I've got other things. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Guy. I was, was it something I said? I didn't mean. Well, look, you. Uh, you better have that malt I promised you, Johnny. Well. Ah, oh, cheers. Cheers. Johnny, don't mention Barbara's parents again, will you? She's still very upset about it. Yes, well, you, you drink that. We'll go for a walk. I'll tell you about it outside. OK. We'll walk out here in the morning. Wonderful view of the lock on a clear day. Look, what's all this about, Guy? Johnny, how well do you remember Barbara's parents? Uh, not very well, really. I remember I had a long argument with her. Mm. I must have been drunk, I suppose. <laughs> yes, um, it's about the national number system, I think. She actually said she was looking forward to National Lumber Day, something like that. And her father, well, I remember him a bit better, just um, plump, small, little moustache, strutting little man, you know. Good, honest, hard-working people. Uh, yes, that's what I thought. He was leading a double life. Really? Yeah, well, that's the impression I got reading between the lines. Old Witherington's double life. Ah, oh, come on, he was much too respectable. Yeah, I know. I still find it difficult to believe. Well, what actually happened to them? Oh, I wish I knew. He always claimed that someone had it in for him, but none of us really believed him in the end. Did he say who? Well, no, I just thought it was an excuse, you know, a let-out. He kept on saying well, hang so... Hang on, just uh, take me right back to the start. Well, Annette... Uh, that's Barbara's mother. Yes, I remember. Yeah, well, you see, she used to have a part-time job. And she got home late one afternoon. Oh, it's you, Annette. I thought it was the grocery man. Sorry to trouble you, Joy, but has your water been cut off? Yes. 
Well, they did say they were going to, didn't they? Did they? Well, yes. Chap came round early this morning, said it'd be off for several hours. Well, he didn't come to us. I expect you've both gone to work. We said we'd be without water, gas and electricity for most of the day. Must be an emergency or something. Oh, I wish I'd known. I went to fill the kettle and there was no water. Well, do you better come in. I filled a couple of thermos flasks so I can offer you a cup of coffee. Oh, that'll be lovely. And Derek said he thought we might tour around for a bit if the weather was nice and we could call in and see Barbara on the way back. Mm. We had a nice holiday last year. Did 3,000 miles. Oh, look, mm -hmm. they're back. Well, those men from the water board. They're digging up your lawn. They're not. Oh. Derek will be upset. I'd better go and stop them. I say... Cooey? I say... Would you mind telling me exactly what you think you're doing? There's a fault somewhere along this gas main, lady. Gas? I thought you were waterboard. It's a gas fault, lady. Well, I do think you might have had the courtesy to come and ask. My husband's proud of that lawn. Don't worry. As soon as we finish, we'll put it back. Good as new, you'll see. I should hope so. And they said they'd put it back as they found it. Well, I've never seen such a mess. Uh, I'll get on to the gas people in the morning. Look, what I don't understand is why, if there was a gas leak, did they turn off the water? And the electricity, why dig up the lawn? I don't understand it. Nothing's working. Gas, electricity, water, phone, they're all still off. Well, mine have come on again, just as normal. I wonder if I went and looked at the fuse box. We did. We took a torch. Everything's all right. Well, I don't understand it. Somebody's blundered, that's certain. Well, never mind. Look, I've arranged for you to eat here. Well, Tony won't mind, and then you can spend the night in our spare oh, room. Well, it's nice of you to offer joy, but we'll manage. Well... Well, look, then. After dinner, let me make you up some sandwiches and a flask, and then you can take one or two extra blankets in case it's cold oh, tonight. Oh, I don't want to put you to a lot of trouble, Joy. Oh, it's no trouble. That's what neighbours are for, to help out at times like this. Oh, thank you, Joy. Well, there's nothing for it, Annette, my dear. You will just have to camp out for tonight. Uh, then I'll get on the blower first thing in the morning and sort this mess out. I'm very sorry, sir, but as I've already told you, this is not my department's concern. We don't know anything about it. If you like, I'll put you through to account. But damn it all, it's been two days now. We can't even use the toilets without water. Ah, water. Well, so that's a water board problem. Why don't you get on to them? I've been on to them. And the electricity people, the phone people, the emergency services, and nobody's done a bloody thing. There's no need to be offensive, sir. Oh, damn! Well, I have checked with records, and as far as we're concerned, there's nothing wrong. It's not our problem. Perhaps emergency services, but we've got no electricity or gas or water or anything. Uh, why don't you try the water board? I have, and they said to try you. Well, this is a water board problem. You go back and demand action. It's a shame wasting your time like this. Well, we could send someone along to check the supply, but have you tried the gas people? No, oh, madam. Uh, this is a water board problem. I, I should try them again if I were you. No, madam, our concern is with the fluoride in the water. But where do I go to to get the water put on again? This is the third time I've been here. Uh, look, I want you to send someone to deal with the water supply. Ah, it takes a water board engineer to deal with that. Well, send one. Uh, look, madam, have you tried emergency services? Yes. I've tried everybody and it's no use. Oh, dear, well... Uh... Look, fill out this card. Just give your national number, etc., and I'll run it through the machine for information. Oh, thank you. Now, let me see. Well, that is interesting. According to this, your water supply was cut off upon official instructions last Monday afternoon. You haven't moved house by any chance? No, we haven't. And it's not a derelict building you occupy, is it? Certainly not. I see. Well, to be honest with you, I'm baffled. You sure you have a moved house? Yes! Oh, dear. Well, we'd better fill out a yellow card for further queries. But you just done that? No, that was a blue card. But how long is all this going to take? You, you can't leave us without water indefinitely? No, I see that. Look, I know what I'll do. I'll give you a free book of vouchers for the public baths and wash house. I'm not supposed to, of course, but it should see you through the crisis. 
Public baths, wash houses, is a farce. Well, you go and see them then. Well, you know I can't take the time off. It's a bad time. Things aren't too well at the office. If you want to know, I think somebody's trying to get rid of me. But who and why? What have you been doing? Doing? Nothing. How do I know who's trying to get rid of me? Could be anybody. Could be one of the clerks, Jones, Creswell. I mean, how do I know? What are we going to do? Oh, I don't know. Look, you, you'll just have to go and see them again in the morning. Oh, but I... Oh, I know, love. It's infuriating. I'm sorry I went for you. It's, it's not your fault, I know. It'll all come right. You'll see. Well, just take it slowly and have a bit of patience. Now, you go and see them in the morning and, and, and be firm with them, eh? I'll try it. Good girl. If you'll just take a seat, madam. Well, look, I, I don't want to push in, but it's rather urgent. There are urgent. other people before you, madam. If you'll just take a seat. Oh, oh all right. Um, excuse me, is the seat taken? No, dear. Sit down. Take the weight off your legs. They can half push us about. <laughs> yes, they do, rather. I'm still not sure I'm in the right place. Oh, well, there's a lot of us that thinks that at first. Your supply will be reconnected as soon as you pay your arrears. But I haven't any arrears. Then you've no problem. You have a gas supply then. No. That's why I've come. Then your supply will be reconnected as soon as you pay your bill. But we always pay our bills. Come on, Mrs. We haven't got all day. Tell your old man you found him out. Right? Have you contacted emergency supplies? Yes, but they didn't come. Well, the reason for that is that you're £89 in arrears. That's ridiculous. Yes. Sorry, there's nothing I can do until you pay. Look, it's all a mistake, but I'll give you a check. Now, what's the date? Oh, come on, dear Harry. There are other people waiting, you know. Uh, uh, yes, um, now, um, £89. At 95, six. madam, there'll be an inquiry charge and a reconnection charge. Why couldn't you tell me you hadn't paid the bill? All this fuss and bother and all the time... But, but I have paid the bill. It was paid automatically through the bank. I've got the last statement in the drawer. Well, I looked a complete bloody fool, I can tell you. Never felt so ashamed. Oh, the trouble is you don't know how to handle these people. Look, I'll go in first thing tomorrow and sort them out. I've just about had enough of this. Excuse And high time, too. Now, look here. You saw my wife yesterday, and you told her that we were in arrears with our... Arrears? I'm afraid you're in the wrong section, sir. You want Sector AA. This is Sector AC. Uh, what's the trouble here? A uh, gentleman wants arrears. I see. Uh, this way, please, sir. I'll show you where to wait. But I've been waiting an hour already. I'm sorry, sir, but we are very busy, as you can see. Now, sir, what can I do for you? Well, you're the chap I saw before in Sector AA. Uh, yes, sir, I take over here after 11 o'clock. Now, <laughs> what seems to be the trouble? Uh, well, uh, my wife, uh, she came in yesterday, and it seems that the fund... So, uh, the whole thing's a complete mess-up. I mean, here's the statement and the bill stamped paid. Now, it's absolute proof, you see? Uh, well, it does seem to have been a mistake, sir. I'm awfully sorry. You leave the statement in the bill with me. I'll get cracking and have someone along in double quick time. Don't you worry any more, sir. No, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. They still haven't come. Oh, it's awful, isn't it? You're sure you paid the bill? Not only did I pay, but Annette gave them another check. Uh, did you ring Mr. Evans like I asked you, Annette? Yes, Mr. Evans is not available. He's on leave. They promised to look into it. Oh, my God. Uh, leave it to me. Mr. Evans said he'd deal with it. There's no record of it. But I saw Mr. Evans. Now, let me speak to him. Mr. Evans is not available, sir. Anyway, he'd hardly deal with arrears. He's Sector AA. This is Sector AC. Uh, now, sir, do you have the bill and the statement? No, I told you. Mr. Evans has them. But Mr. Evans isn't available. Oh, but this is ridiculous. Look, I demand to see the manager. Oh, there's no need to shout, sir. I've checked your file, and the only information we have is that you're £89 in arrears, plus costs pending the clearance of the cheque your wife wrote. So you see, sir, there's nothing for you to see the manager about.
Derek, there's a letter for you. And Joy said we'd go over to breakfast. Oh, thank God one of the services is working. It's probably from the gas people. No, it's from the bank. I wonder what they want. Come in. Oh, come in, Derek. How's everything? How's the hand again, eh? Well, I have a few. <clears throat> Haven't seen you at the club lately. Uh, no, I've uh, I've been busy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wilkins nearly got a hole in one on Sunday. Oh, that would have cost him. <laughs> Old skinflint. Uh, no, 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 Derek. What's on your mind? Hmm? What can I do to help you, old man? Um, it's it's about this uh, letter you sent me. Um, I'd like an explanation, please, Simon. Mm. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I should think uh, you'd know more of what's behind this than we do, Derek. Hmm? <laughs> You do realise that it isn't us who sent you this letter. This comes from central office. Yes, I dare say, but um, the point is I, I can't get any money. No. No. Let me assure you, Derek, when I received a copy of this directive, I queried it at once. And there's nothing more I can do. Well, I suppose there may have been a, a mix-up, but central office have the full picture. The you full see. picture? Yes. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Look, Simon, you know how much comes into my account each month and how much goes out. Don't get me wrong, Derek. I'm on your side. Uh, but I can only vouch for you for, for, for what? The, the past three years, is it? Anyone would think we'd committed a crime. Uh, crime? Look, we'd better come to some arrangement about just how much I can draw until things get sorted out. Ah, it's difficult. Uh, central office were quite specific. Not a penny until a full report comes through. Yes, but... I'm sorry, Derek, but it's out of my hands. I'm sorry, I really am. But until matters get sorted out... Look, Miss Davis, this is very urgent. I simply must be paid in cash. But you know, Mr. Witherington, that's not the firm's policy. But it's my salary. I mean, surely I can draw it how I wish. Well, uh, suppose we say that you just pay this month's in cash. Hmm? Too late, I'm afraid. It's past the tenth. This month's salaries are already in the pipeline. I want my salary in cash. Mr. On no account must it be paid into the bank. All right, Miss Davis, I'll cope with this. Thank you, sir. Sit down, Derek, old boy. You know, you don't look too well to me. I'm sorry, Mr. Creswell. It's just that things have been getting me down. Yes, I can see that. Look, why don't you see your doctor and take a few days' rest? But I must have my salary in cash. Just a few days, and then we'll go into the matter. Uh, Miss Davis, just show Mr. Uh, Witherington out, will you? Yes, sir. The whole thing's bloody fantastic. Yes, sir, I knew you wouldn't believe me. I do believe you, Guy, but well, what happened next? Well, Annette got on to Barbara, and she thought it was high time that we took a hand. Mm -hmm. So we drove down to see them with the car loaded up like a supermarket, everything but the kitchen sink. Oh, I thought that Annette had been getting herself worked up over nothing. You know how some women are, let things build up and so on. And anyway, Barbara reckoned that she'd soon get things sorted out. But as we sat in that damp, cold, dark house and got the full story, well, I wasn't too sure that she would. That's the position, Barbara. But it's incredible. Why didn't you let us know before? We didn't know it would get this far. Look, I bought candles and a gas cylinder, blankets, tin food and water containers. The boots jam full. Oh, it's good of you both. Uh, I'll give you a hand to unload. Guy's driving home tonight, but I'll see what I can do to help you for a day or two. Oh, and here's some cash and a credit card. Oh, Barbara, you shouldn't. You can pay it back. It's just to tide you over. Oh, Barbara. Hey, buck up, <laughs> Mum. I'll have a go at these people. Leave it to me. Hello? I'm speaking on behalf of my father, Mr. Derek Witherington. It's about his bank account. I'm afraid we cannot discuss this matter on the phone. It is our policy to deal with our customers through their local friendly bank manager. Yes, but apparently the matter is out of his hands. My father said that it... What I'm had happened was... We cannot discuss this matter on the phone. It is our policy to deal with our customers through their local friendly bank manager. But look here. I'm afraid we cannot discuss this matter on the phone. It is our policy... Bloody recording. You've just got to keep on at them. Now look, I've got to get back to the kids. Here's some more cash. I've seen his solicitor, and he's writing to the bank. I've also seen the community relations officer. He said he'll do all he can. It's a Mr. Thomas, by the way. He said to call in. Well, that's all I can do for the moment. You've been a great help, Barbara. I haven't achieved much. Oh, it's lovely just having you here. It was getting me down. 
Uh, you've cheered us up a, a, a lot. Come on, Dad, where's the old fighting spirit? Don't let the bastards grind you down. Isn't that what you used to say? Well, that's the idea. I'll go and see Mr. Creswell again about my salary. And, uh, and I'll see the com um, community man. Uh, Mr. Thomas, wasn't it? That's the spirit. Well, I must get off. I'll run you down to the station, love. Uh, Dad, there's nothing you haven't told me, is there? About money or anything? Something you don't want Mum to know? No, nothing. I, I just don't understand it. You're quite sure? You know you, you can talk to me about it? There's nothing. Someone's got it in for us, that's what it is. But who? I don't know. I wish I did. I really wish I did. It's you, Annette. Come in. You look awful. Had a hard day. I don't know what to do. Come in and have a cup of tea and tell me what's been happening. Thanks, Joy. I'll just sit down. No tea, thanks. Well, what's happened? Mr. Thomas said I ought to talk it over with Derek. I went to the bank, and Mr. Hindley was very nice. He gave me £50, pounds, a special advance. I paid it to the gas company. Perhaps they'll put the gas on now, and, and then I went to the doctor, and he gave me some sleeping pills. He said... There, there, love. He said, I've got to see a psychiatrist. Oh, it's all right, love. You're upset. Overtense. It's quite normal these days, especially after all you've been through. You've been very kind, Joy. I know we've been in a lot of trouble. Not at all, love. But, well, well, that is, Tony was saying he's a bit worried about the garden. You see, the water's seeping through from your lawn and it's making a terrible mess. Well, I, I know things are difficult, but... Well, we've, we've done our bit, and, well, it, it is becoming a bit difficult, and Tony... Yes, I, I know. And, and Tony, well, I mean, he doesn't see things the same way as I do, and, well, it's, it's not as though you've been a nuisance, but, well, Tony was saying, and, and the garden is a terrible mess. Yes, Joy, I understand. I really do. Ned, you awake? <laughs> Ned, are you crying? Derek, love, I don't think I can go on with this much longer. It's cold and dirty and... Joy's fed up with us and everything. Has <laughs> Joy said anything? <laughs> well, she blames Tony, but... <sighs> and they have been good. Oh. Look, Derek, I'd rather know. I'd rather know why. I don't mind what it is, but I must know. Derek, are you awake? There's nothing to tell. But there must be. I, I do wish you'd tell me. You don't trust me. That's it, isn't it? There's nothing to tell, really. They're all talking about us, you know. The neighbours and all our friends. Mm, friends. Well, I expect they are. I suppose they do think it's my fault. I'm up to something. But it's, it's, it's just not true. You know, I wouldn't mind if I had done something wrong. Of course I'd tell you, love. Oh, but this is different. There's nothing to come to grips with. Are you sure there's nothing, Derek? Really? Of course not. Someone's got it in for me, that's all. 
You... You would tell me, wouldn't you? If there was something. Oh, for God's sake. Go to sleep. I've got to go to work tomorrow and it's late. Uh, sit down, please, Witherington. Now, uh, I understand that you've been bothering accounts again. They promised to pay my salary in cash and they didn't. It's gone into the pipeline in the normal way. Oh, well, we can't make exceptions for everyone, you know. But I'm not everyone. I'm Witherington, an old employee of the company. Ah, yes. So I'm glad you brought that up. Mm? You see, I've been discussing your work with Jones, and we both feel that, well, you're no longer able to keep abreast of your work. In fact, we've agreed to give you a month's salary in lieu of notice, and reluctantly to dispense with your services. I'm sorry, Eric. Derek. Derek. Uh, but uh, there it is. Uh... I see. So uh, so that's it, is it? I'm fired. I'm afraid so. But you are giving me a month's salary. Hmm? Well, I suppose that's something. After all these years, I didn't think it would come to this. I'm very sorry, but the decision is final, I'm afraid. Uh, well, uh, well, that's that. I, I don't know how I'm going to tell my wife. She's most upset as it is. If you would give me my money, I'll be going, uh, unless you... Want me to stay on until the end of the week? Oh, we'd rather you left at once. As for your money, it's in the pipeline in the usual manner. What? But you know I wanted it in cash. There's no need to raise your voice. You bloody fool! You're one of them, aren't you? You're out to get me. I know you're hounding me. You're in league with them. Of course, I, I, I'll see it now. Is everything all right, sir? I've done nothing wrong, you know. You've all got it in for me. I know you're all out to get me, but you won't, you bastards! You might get me a, a cup of tea, my dear. Yes, sir. Have you come about the water? Uh, that's right. Like a cup of tea? Oh, uh, yes, please. Oh, thank God. At last. Thank God! Yeah, yeah. Hold on, lady. What's all this? I knew you'd come. I knew it was all a mistake. Oh, thank God. Now we can get back to normal. What? Uh, what's your on about, dear? What's up? Oh, we... You have come to reconnect the water supply, haven't you? No, lady. No. We kind of stopped this water running into next door, into this lady's garden. Joy, what's going on? Well, I don't know what's going on as far as you're concerned, but... Well, I've had quite enough of our garden being ruined, so I rang the water board. And they came. Just like that. Yeah, well, you should have had this scene to before, love. Awful mess. We didn't think there was anyone living here. But you you can do something now, can't you? Re reconnect, I mean, while you're here. Please. Oh, please. Well, I, I would, love, but uh, I haven't got any authorization. It's got to be authorised, see? Authorised? Yes, I see. And for you... They came. I, I must ring Derek and get out to head office. Oh, what's up with her? She dotty or something? She's had a lot of trouble. It's her husband. Funny business. Oh, well, takes all sorts, I suppose. Right then, back to work. Oh, God, what a mess. I wonder what Joker did this. Hello. This is Mrs. Witherington. I would like to speak to my husband, please. He's in Mr. Jones's department. Your husband is no longer with us. He left over a week ago. I'm sorry. Hasn't he told you? Thank you. Any news? Did you get on the Barbara? Annette? Where's she gone to? I'll be at the Jones. Annette? Oh, my God. Annette? What's the matter? Annette? Wake up! Wake up! Annette? What a bloody stupid thing to do. 
it. <laughs> he must have left the body where it was. Joy found her two days later. She'd taken an overdose. Derek's car was found abandoned on the motorway. The tank was empty and there was no sign of him. He disappeared without a trace, vanished into thin air. It's incredible. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. So now you know. And that's what we're doing here. Barbara couldn't get far enough away. Yes, I see. The generator. Oh, yes, if Barbara had her way, we wouldn't be on Maine's water. I'd been expecting something. You've been expecting something? Look, Johnny, what is all this about? Well, it's something that happened at the hospital. A colleague showed me a photo he found on a patient of his. It was of your wedding. What? Look, let's, let's go back to the house. I want to tell you both together, and tomorrow I'd like Barbara to come to London with me. I'd like her to see this chap. She just might recognise him. Look, Johnny, what? Look, you'll see. Come on, let's get back. Lola! Where the hell have you been? Oh, Scotland, actually. Um, I was just going to look for you. This is Barbara, and... Um, yes, hello. Now, look. Let me have that bloody photograph. Well, I don't think I can just at the moment. I want it now. That Nemerson noticed it was missing and made a hell of a fuss. Right in front of our senior man, Tolbridge, during rounds. Threatened to go to the hospital management committee. Said his possessions had been tampered with. You do realise that this could cost me my promotion. Ruman, Tolbridge is due to retire at the end of the year and I'm next in line. You've got to give me that photograph now. Look, Barbara and I will bring it to your room later and we can all discuss it then. Discuss it? What is there to discuss? It's the patient's photograph. You ought to have it back. Actually, it was originally stolen from my parents' house. Well, let me have it as soon as you can. I've got to go. And let's have no more funny business. Nemerson is my patient and is my bloody future that's at stake. What's all that about? So it's me. Funny bloke. Anyway, finish your tea and then we'll uh, we'll go upstairs and have a look at this chap, Nemerson. Nurse? Nurse? Yes, Doctor. The patient, Nemerson. He's gone. He can't have. Oh, God, I must tell Sister. He's cleared out his drawer. His notes have gone from the bottom of the bed. What on earth? Ah, Sister. What's going on? Where's my patient? Who are you? I'm a doctor. But he's under Dr. Ruman. Yes, I know, but I, I have a, an interest in this patient. But Dr. the Ruman patient's gone. gone, and so have all his records. Nurse, this will have to be reported to Dr. Tolbridge immediately. Come on, Barbara, let's find Ruman. What's that on the floor? That? Oh, looks like a get-well card. He must have left it. Why don't you take it? Yeah, OK. What's been going on here? What a mess. My books, records, tapes, all ruined. Just look at this bloody mess. Ruman, you may not see the connection, but your patient, Nemerson, he's disappeared. Oh, don't be absurd. I'm telling you, he's gone. There's all hell to pay upstairs, and I guess he's got something to do with this. Why? Perhaps he wanted the photograph back. The wedding group. Well, if you'd give it back to me, I'm I... sorry, Ruben. I can't just yet. Lola, I've warned What's you What's happened about... to your family group? What family group? The one you had on your desk, framed. You showed it me last week. It seems to have gone. Ruben, I'd call the police. <sighs> no. No, I, I, I want to think. I'm, I'm not convinced you're right about Nemerson. I'm not going to call the police. It'll lead to trouble, and my promotion's at stake. You're mad. What? Eliminate. What do you mean, Lawler? There's probably a ring round your head on that family group right now. The Witheringtons had a pretty rough ride, I can tell you. I don't know what you're talking about. Who are the Witheringtons? Remember the wedding group? The bride's parents with a ring round them? Eliminate? Why? Did something happen to them? You, you never told me. You haven't been exactly bursting to know. The Witheringtons are Barbara's parents. Oh, yes, I wondered who you were. Well, now you know. They had a lot of bad luck. It looked like financial trouble, but... Oh, well, financial trouble. Either you're the type of person who has that or you're not. My father was not. Well, I hardly see how my patient Nemerson can be responsible for yes, what Yes, we're still working on that one. But no doubt you'll be hearing from him again. What do you mean? I really would spike his guns first and go to the police. No. There's more to life than promotion, Ruman. Well, at least... Keep me informed. I'm hanging on to the wedding photo, and if you do hear from Nemerson, send him to me. I'd like to meet him. I'm only across an SMU. I'll be in Baines Ward if you do want me. Come on, Barbara. Hi, Eva. How's everything? How's old Singh? Oh, he's well. He wants to leave the hospital. Great. Not only that, but he wants to take his number card with him. Does he? He wants a new life. So, what are you going to do? He's dead set on going, is he? Mm, most of the time. 
Look, Johnny, somebody's going to spot that he wasn't born in Karachi for a start. And if he starts claiming a pension or anything. Johnny, he just can't walk out of here. You'll just have to certify him or something, ship him off somewhere. He's not certifiable. But he could do with a, another number, something a bit less obviously out of key than sing. I know. Alton. He's terminal. Oh, Johnny, you're such an idiot. Uh, I'd better go in and see him now. Oh, and Yvette, uh, there's a Mrs. Luscombe waiting for me down in the hall. Let her know I won't be long, will you? <laughs> OK, boss. <laughs> it's, it's purely a formality, Mr. Singh, that's all. Oh, there's, there's, no, there's no light to hold me here without trial. Yeah, all right, now let's uh, just pipe down a bit and come on, let's go outside, this way. Now, come over here and be quiet. Now, how are you? Well, I'm all right, but I, I thought they'd got you. Who? Them? Oh, it's a great relief to see you back here. I've got, I've got something to ask you. I, I need, I need some, some new dentures. Oh, well, that should be easy enough yes, to arrange. That's what I thought. Yes, I, I've got the number now, haven't I? I, I? I could even discharge myself from hospital. You see, you see, I'm, I'm, I'm frightened. I, I, I want to see my doctor. I, I just want to check that my number disc's still in order. Mm. You know, I, do, I don't want any trouble with the authorities. Uh, none of us no. want that. No. All um, right, now, um, here's your disc. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, this, is, this isn't my disc. It says, it says Alton. My name's not Alton. It's, it's Sing, Mr. Sing. But ever since you arrived, you've been telling me it isn't Sing. Well, it, it isn't Alton. Well, what is it? Mm. Have you ever had a number? Oh, I don't remember. Well, perhaps you could check. Oh, oh well, that, 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 that was the question. Why? Oh. Do you have a number? Well, you, oh, you know all about me. Well, you know why they've got it in for me. But I assure you I don't, Mr. Singh. Oh, yeah, there you are. You just <laughs> called me Mr. Singh. And yet here you are, giving me a disc with Alton on it. Now, I know who Alton is. He's the old bloke near the window. Now, I'm not ending up like him. Look, why, why can't I go on being Mr. Singh? Thing. Look, you obviously aren't, Mr. Singh. But, 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 Mr. Singh would be an Indian but gentleman. But I want to be Mr. Singh. He's got a very good number, Mr. Singh. Oh, have it your own way. For goodness sake, who is this man, Emerson, anyway? You should have gone over Roman's head and brought the police in. I'm sorry, but if we're going to bring a case against this man at any stage, then we're going to need Roman's cooperation. And the evidence right now is pretty tenuous. But if he starts fouling up Ruman, I'm damned if I can see how he does it. Can't you get his address from hospital records? No, he took his notes with him. Didn't you find a letter or something in Nemerson's room? No, not much help. A get well card. It's here. Best wishes, Maudie Boone. Dear Mr N, very sorry to hear of your dreadful accident. Let me know if there's anything you want sending. We are all praying for your recovery. Well, that doesn't get us anywhere. Yes, it does. I'm going to trace Mrs. Boone and go and see her. No, I don't think that would be wise. Namerson knows someone's onto him. We don't want him retaliating on you. Let Ruman be the stool pigeon. Well, I'll see. No, don't go, Barbara. Or well, if you do go, for goodness sake, let me come with you. Good evening. I'm sorry to disturb you, Mrs. Boone, but I got your number from the book, and I think you may be able to help me. Thursday. I beg your pardon? Thursday. Half past six. Your name? Oh, uh, Hoskins. Mrs. Hoskins. Right. See you Thursday. 13 Ardle Park. Half past six. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I have the right place. I want to see a Mrs. Boone. That's right. Come in. Why don't you? Trevor, ask the lady in. Oh, I have, ma'am. This way. Well, come in, dear. Trevor's my son. A very big man was his father. Have a seat, dear. You can go now, Trev. And shut the door as you go. Righto. Sorry, I can't get up, dear. 
but I've terrible trouble with my legs. Very painful. You poor thing. Can't the doctors do anything? Doctors? Not worth going near them. I'm surprised you mentioned them. It's not very common among people of our persuasion. Oh, yes. Uh, silly of me. I mean, really, I quite agree about doctors. I know you do, dear. You wouldn't be here if you didn't. I don't really know if you'll be able to help me. Uh, you see... Don't it's... tell me, dear. You're interrupting the flow. I never like my clients to tell me. Just sit quietly, dear. You were uh, very worried about someone, dear. Another woman. Another woman and your husband. Yes, I can tell. I wondered if you could help. Well, what would you like us to do, dear? Now, do you want him back? I'm not sure. Aren't you? It's her I was thinking of, to tell you the truth. Well, uh, there is something I could suggest. Yes. Hand me that book, will you, dear? Yes, that's right. Thank you. Now, let's see. Curses. Well, there's night cramps. That ensures that the bewitched wakens nightly with pains in the legs. That's five pounds. Then uh, there's deafness, impotence, frigidity or infertility. And we do the grand medley curse. And three for the price of two. Uh, that's eight pound. Uh, mind you, I have to be paid in cash. Eight pound. Uh, yes, of course. Here you are. Um, thank you, dear. But uh, I was hoping for something a little more extreme. Oh. oh, I'm afraid I don't do anything more extreme. Not for outsiders. Isn't there something more final? Well, uh, there is uh, someone I know who might be able to help you. But he won't do anything for outsiders. But if he was to take a liking to you, if you take my meaning, he does have the most remarkable powers. What's his name? Sharif. He's foreign. We don't allow foreign races in our movement, dear. How can I get in touch with him? Oh, you can't, dear. Not just like that. You have to be initiated. But if you're interested, dear, in what we do, we could put you in touch with someone who can introduce you to the mysteries. I know someone I think would be ideal for you. She's your type of person. Same vibrations. I'm sure she'd like to meet you. Trevor will take you to her if you like, dear. We're always interested in new blood. Is it much further? No. You gonna join? Uh, I think so. They like people like you. Women like. They don't half have some good goings on, this Leela and Sherry. Oh, I wouldn't mind being in. I expect he gave you the creeps, didn't he? He does me. Yes, he did rather. I'm Leela. Mrs. Boone Rang says you're interested in joining us. Of course, if you do, you're sworn to secrecy. Of course. We aren't awfully nice to people who give the game away. But, of course, whatever you decide, it'll be a little while before we admit you to any of the secrets. Now, how much do you know? A little, not much. Well, basically... We believe that man has lost something in this century, that he has, as it were, lost touch with his inner self and his... ...what you might call super-rational powers. And we try to help to put people back in touch with these. Hey, Terry, how about some coffee? I've nearly finished here. Okay, it's all ready. But we are rather special. 
in that we have a man called Sharif as our Grand Templar. In fact, some of us would go further and say that he wasn't a man at all. I'd say he was divine. Coffee. Hello? This is Mrs. Hoskins, Barbara. She's thinking of joining us. I was just saying what wonderful power Sharif has. This is my husband, Terry. You women think he's marvellous. I'm not saying I don't admire him. Don't, don't get me wrong. Anyway, you must come to a meeting, Barbara. She'll fit in, I think. Don't you? Oh, yes. Uh, I should think Sharif might take to her. How did you come to meet Mrs. Boone? Oh, I came across her through some people I know. A man called Derek Witherington. I don't know the name. Nor me. W Witherington? He was a friend of Mr. Nemerson. I don't know that name either. Excuse me a minute, Terry. Give Barbara some coffee and a biscuit. Don't be long. W Witherington? No, never heard of him. Sugar? No, no, thank you. Maudie advertises in the Occult Gazette. That's how most people come to her. I see. And she's in the Occult Guide to London, too. Terry, she's a snooper. Maudie didn't tell her. She must be from the press. Well, what are we going to do? I think you'd better go. There's nothing to investigate here. Now, we haven't forced you to do anything, have we? No, that's true. Well, then, off it. We can't just let her go. If you think... It I don't isn't know what, but... safe to let her out alive. No one is supposed to know Sharif's identity. She'll have to be disposed of. Now, look here. I'm going. Oh, no, you don't. Here, give me that bag. No. you better, Mrs. Hoskins. Damn, there isn't a photograph here. Oh, what the hell, he doesn't need the photograph anyway. The number's the most important thing. There, copy out this number, Terry. Here's your bag, you rotten little troublemaker. And I'm warning you, if any of this gets in the press, I'll make sure something happens to you. We've got ways, you know. Go on. Whoever you are, skip it. She's mad. Yes, thanks. Don't thanks. come back here, you bitch. If you do, I'll... I'll, I'll kill you! I'm watching you, Doctor. What number are you giving out today? Hmm? Oh, Mr. Alton. <laughs> is he going to be found then? <laughs> oh, what's his name? Come on, what is it? Mr. Oflong Dong. All right, yeah. Back to bed with you, Mr. Singh. There's a good fella. He's got a lot of dumb numbers. That's right. He dicks his mouth all the time. Yeah. Johnny! Johnny! I've got to talk to you. Barbara, you look awful. What's been happening? It's very important that we talk now, right away, Johnny. I think I'm on to something. I found Nemerson's friends. Oh, it's dreadful. They've taken my number. Oh, Johnny, what's going to happen? Oh, Johnny, I want to go home. Barbara, it's all right. <laughs> now, come on, we'll go up to my room and have a drink and then tell me everything that's been happening. <laughs> Mr Singh seems to be having a fit. <laughs> Nurse, will you look after Mr Singh, please? <laughs> come on, Barbara. <laughs> Morning, Doctor. Morning. How are you today? Morning, thank you. Morning, Doc. Morning, Mr. Slocum. You all right? Where's Mr. Singh? Oh, he, he cleared off. He, he went mad last night when you left. You know, going on all about it for hours, he was. About what? Well, he said, you're a good lady. It was his daughter. He was? What lady? I don't you know, understand. He went on something. Oh, you know, the young woman that came up here, he said, it was his daughter. <laughs> well, he's a nutcase, of course. Well, at least that's what I think. Yeah. You're all right, Doc. Did he... Did you say where he was going? No. No, he didn't even say goodbye. He, he was crying, you know. Yeah. Well, she's not his daughter, is she, our missus? No. <laughs> I mean, he's crackers, you know. Barbara, his daughter. Mr. Singh is Derek Witherington. Oh, Johnny, there you are. I've been trying to find you with the good news. I suppose you've seen for yourself. He's gone at last, Singh. Yes, I can see. Well, I'll have to look for him. But you... I'll get on to missing persons about him. You'll what? You'll be arrested for fiddling no, numbers. It, it won't matter. Anyway, I'm resigning from this place. Oh, big deal. What about me? What about Marty in cremations? We're all your accomplices as far as the law is concerned. Look, Yvette, I don't want to get anyone into trouble, but I've got to find Singh. You wanted to lose him last week. You're off your rocker. 
You blow the numbers, Fiddle, and Marty and me gets put inside, and a few others as well. I'm going to send the details into missing persons, and then I'll send in my resignation. Don't worry, they won't find out. Oh, boy. Look, you better get on with the ward rounds. I'm going off duty now, and, and you haven't done an inspection today. OK, OK, I'll do it when I get back. I must see Ruben first. I shan't be long. But, Johnny... Ruman, I must have a word with you. Uh, I'm afraid I haven't the time. Uh, there's been something of a muddle. My gas and electricity have been cut off by mistake. And I'm trying to sort things out. Well, that's how it started with the Witheringtons. The people in the photograph you gave me. Oh, what have you done with it? I'm hanging on to it. Look, Ruman, we must get together. I don't know what Nemerson's playing at. I don't know how it's done. But he's taken a dislike to you. He's stolen a photograph of you. He's behind it all. The gas... The electricity? You're mad. All right, don't believe me. But I'll tell you something else. The next thing that will happen, your bank account will seize up. And when that happens, you come and see me. Hello, Barbara. It's me, Johnny. Listen, uh, you know, Ruman, his gas and electricity have been cut off. Christ. Yeah. Now, look, I want to check on something. That woman, Leela, did she say she only needed the number? Is that right? Yes, but... OK, I... have you got your mother's and father's numbers? Yes, I think so. They're in my handbag. Good. I'm going to Data Information Centre. I want to make a thorough check on this man, Nemerson. And while I'm there, I'll do a cross-check and see if he knew your parents. Excuse me, sister. Yes, Doctor. I must see Dr Lawler. It's urgent. Oh, sorry, Doctor. You're too late. Too late? Yes, he went to Newcastle yesterday evening. Can I help you, sir? Yes, please. I want some checks, Ron. You need to fill up the necessary dockets. I've done that already. Here are the slips. There are five of them in all. First of all, I want the name, address and occupation of a man known as Nemerson. Also this one, Witherington. Have you the numbers? Yes. And I'd like a cross-check run to see if there's any connection between the two. I shall require an affidavit signed in the presence of a lawyer for the cross-check. Why do you need the information? A uh, medical guard. I'm a doctor. Well, that should be all right. And uh, the other two slips? Oh, yes. Well, I'd like to know who is entitled to submit information to Data Information Centre. And if it's possible to tamper with information, and whether DIC has any procedure for damming up essential services. This will take a day or two, I'm afraid. Oh, all right. Well, I'll call in on Tuesday. We should have the information by then. Tuesday, yes, that should be all right. But it's been a week now. I'm sorry, I've sent her to follow up. Look, I know you're doing your best, but... Dr. Lawler. Yes. I uh, have your dockets here. Now, uh, these two general requests. Yes. And you're advised to obtain necessary stationary office leaflets. The IC is only an information centre. It has no executive powers to withdraw facilities. I see. Well, that doesn't get me very far. And the others, the cross-check. Ah, yes. This has been rejected as an unauthorised demand. The fact that you've made such a demand will be entered on your own DIC record. And that's all, I'm afraid. It's still pending. But I have to get back to London. There's nothing more I can do. No, I don't suppose there is. Well, thanks, anyway. Excuse me. Yes? Sorry to startle you. Just wondered if you would give me a lift back to town. My accelerator cable's gone. Oh, yes. No, jump in. Bit late to be out here. Been for a drive? I've been walking up on the common. Needed some fresh air. It gets stuffy down in the DIC building, even with that air conditioning. What? Working for someone around here, are you? Working? Thought you might be one of us. Look, what the hell are you on about? Uh, agents, inquiry agents. You must have seen us all sitting there in the foyer. Oh, yes, I have. I think I've seen you there before, actually, come to think of it. So you've got an unauthorized demand? Yes. Yes, I did. Have to be watching your step then, wouldn't you? Look... If you don't mind my asking... Private query, was it? Yes. Who the hell are you? I thought it probably was. Always trouble with them. Is that? Always. You need an agent, you see. Someone who knows the ropes. Like you, I suppose. Of course. Money talks. 
Well, I just wanted some details about someone, about his friends, his job, that sort of thing. Sounds like you want the whole file. That becomes quite expensive. You can drop me here. Uh, come and see me in the morning. Here's my card. Gilman is the name. I'll be in my office between 10 and 12 o'clock. It could have been one of them, Johnny. Could have been Nemerson himself. Could have been. Johnny! There were hundreds of them all over the building. Inquiry agents. It's a new profession since the computer. Well, it figures, doesn't it? My God, you're back. I've got to go into his firm's London office at 11 o'clock to collect. He said he'd bring it up himself. Shall I come with you? No, no, you wait here. I'll be back by lunchtime. We'll go through the file together. I'm scared, Johnny. No, don't be scared. It's all right. I'll check the address. They're one of the biggest security firms in the country. Come in. Good morning, Dr. Lawler. Good morning. I do have something for you, but uh, a little formality first. Ah, yes, the balance. Well, now, let's see what I'm getting. It's all here. Complete file, complete numbers list, all the bump. Excellent. Right, here's your money. Oh, well, Doctor, thank you. Any time I can be of assistance? I've got to know the ropes, you know. Yes, I see that now. Oh, uh, by the way, old boy, I just thought you ought to know that unauthorised demand you made. Your subject will already have received a red alert slip warning him that one Dr. Lawler, number 49LAW, oblique 42616, oblique J82E, has been inquiring into his affairs. How did you know that? Ah, professional secret, old boy. Know the ropes, you see. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Now, let's see what we paid for. Nemerson, Peter Gavin, uh huh. Medical history, unmarried, birth certificate. It's a huge file. I always wonder what a file from DIC would look like. What are we looking for? Anything unusual. Like what? I don't know. Any mention of your father? Difficult to know where to start. Here, look. Abode, expenditure, income. How about this computer dating service? <laughs> he gave the wrong age. That's been noted. Health records. Criminal offences, none. Mental disturbance, none. He had any number of jobs. Look at this. What? IQ tests. He seems to be some sort of genius. Let's see. Not some sort of genius, a mathematical genius. See? On the basis of these tests, it has been recommended that Nemerson be employed by Data Information Control as a senior programmer. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Look. Following an extremely successful probation year, he has been permanently assigned to H department. What now? I'll have to go through this cross-check file, through every one of these numbers. 3974820, reference page. Oh, can you go, Barbara? Oh, hello. It's Dr. Ruhlman, Johnny. Oh, come in. Lawler, I've got to talk to you. I've been trying to reach you on the phone. It's off the hook. Well, no wonder I couldn't get you. I'll put it on the hook, if I may. All right, you can talk in front of Barbara. Well, I don't suppose I need tell you why I've come. It's my bank. My account's frozen. What did I tell you? Uh, now, see what you've done. Do you mind answering it, Barbara? Hello? Guy? Yes, I'm all right. Oh, sorry. Johnny had the phone off the hook. Yes, you can. But why can't you tell me? Well, what's the matter? What? Oh, Guy, no! What is it? They came and cut the water off yesterday afternoon. Give me the phone. Hello, Guy. Get round to the bank straight away. Draw out everything in your account and more, and then get down to London. There's someone else here with us in the same position. We'd better all get together with a lawyer and draw up a formal complaint of some kind. So get the money and then get down here as fast as you can. I've written down all I can remember. Everything I told you. Fine. And you, Barbara? Ruhlman? Yes, it's all here. I've done my own separate version in case Guy missed anything. So, what's next? I've arranged that we see my lawyer later today. He's a relative of my wife's. I hope that's all right. <laughs> Fine, yeah, we need all the help we can get. Look, don't you think it might be better if we contacted the police? No, not now. Let's go right to the top. Otherwise, we'll just get the same old run around. Do you know they've even cut the water off here at the hospital? I went to my boss and I tried to explain matters to him, but he thought I was crackers. <laughs> He said I'd been overworking. I see now how it works and what Barbara's parents went through. But what about Nemerson? Surely we won't let him get away with this. No, of course we won't. We'll find him. 
The only way I can think of is to keep a round-the-clock watch on Maudie Boone's place. But it might be months before anything happens. Can you think of another way? Ah, come in, gentlemen. Sit down, please. Thank you, Minister. Um, I'd like you both to take a look at this. It's um, a complaint received from a young lawyer, the brother-in-law of one of the plaintiffs, a Mrs. Ruhlman. And uh, concerns a Mr. Derek Witherington, now a missing person, his daughter and two young doctors, Michael Ruhlman and Jonathan Lawler. I've had uh, copies made of the broad outlines here. Oh, thank you. What do you think? <laughs> Extraordinary ideas people get about Data Information Center. There's um, no possibility these people could be right. Oh, none at all, Minister. You, you agree with him? Oh, yes, absolutely. I see. Why? Perhaps you could explain why it is impossible for one of the programmers to falsify information in the way suggested. You see, Minister, there's a colossal amount of data coming into DIC all the time. Now, most of this information doesn't even see the light of day, as it were. It comes in as figures. It goes straight into an automatic program. What about um, feeding in false data? Oh, impossible. I mean, in the first place, it's forbidden, and there are very severe penalties for doing so. And in the second place, all information must have an outside correlate. No information originates in the Data Information Center, except for solutions the computer itself reaches on the basis of received information. No one would get away with it. It's out of the question. If a programmer could tamper with an individual's life in this way, where would we be? <laughs> no. hmm. The... Um fact remains that there are these allegations that data has been tampered with and uh, well, I mean we had to do something about it I I can't see why it's pretty obvious to me that it's just a case of people trying to slide out of their debts mm -hmm. yes you may well be right on the other hand how do you explain this I had to get special clearance on these files here okay just look Wetherington Woolman, Luscombe. And as you can see, fresh sheets of data have been appended to what I take to be the original and correct files. Oh. My God. J procedure. A J procedure? Yes. Tell me about it. The Home Office told me that it hadn't been used for six years. I mean, it's the first thing I thought of, but it's ridiculous. There's nothing in their files even to suggest that they might be eligible. What, um, what was the J procedure? Well, basically, it was just a very simple way of dealing with troublemakers, but it hasn't been used for years. Troublemaker? Aliens, minor spies, particularly minor spies. It was easy enough. An automatic order went out to a firm of subcontractors to do any rough stuff, and once it was done, it was done. It was all carried out on a D-notice, so there was no chance of any protests getting anywhere, no messy scandal. Once you put the J procedure into effect, it was red lights all the way. The um, tidy form of harassment. <laughs> it all fits, of course, with what happened to your chaps, but it's defunct. I believe that the last time it was brought into operation uh, officially, there was almost a frightful expose, Minister. It was a, a young German girl and her friends smelt a rat. <laughs> it, it was thought in certain circles that this was not a very desirable manoeuvre for a democratic government to be manipulated. <laughs> but the um, apparatus for the government to manipulate people in this way hasn't, hasn't been dismantled, right? Apparently not. And um, how exactly does this apparatus work? Uh, there were three or four programmers assigned to home office duties in H department. Uh, any information which the government wanted to make double sure didn't leak out was sent in through one of them, coded, of course. Uh, but their duties included J procedure duties. No one ever knew who they were for security reasons. So that anyone can be allocated to J procedure with no cross-checks, no corroborating data from the computer as to what put him there, right? The uh, programmers were vetted with great care. Oh, yes. Hmm. Well, never mind the selection procedure. Let's talk about the J procedure. You mean to say that nobody checks the list after names were allocated to it? There wasn't even a program check within the computer? Well, one would have thought so. Yes, but 
Well, in view of this case, I can only assume not. You see, this was a separate branch of DIC. It really was not part of my jurisdiction. The procedure was designed to put troublemakers to the maximum of inconvenience with the minimum of fuss. It was never intended that innocent, law-abiding people should get themselves mixed up with it. Quiet. Excuse me. Oh, uh, Miss Jameson, get me the Home Office. H Department. Yes, I'll wait. I really can't understand this. Good morning, Charles. It's about that memo I sent you yesterday. Yes, that's right. Oh, you did? Good man. Yes, well, I'd, I'd just like to check two points. How many people have been put on J procedure recently? A mystery. Hmm, not bad. Yeah, the whole thing was supposed to have ended six years ago. Yeah. Well, now, do these names mean anything to you? Uh, Witherington, Luscombe, uh, Lawler, Ruhlman. Oh, well, they might all there. Yes, the other point, yes, yes, yes. I'd, I'd like the names of the programmers. I can go higher, Charles. Fine. Yes, well, just read the names out, will you? Yep. Yes. Ah. You're quite sure? Yes, well, thank you, Charles. It's the first impossible. thing I want done is the issue of a warrant for this Nemerson chap. The second is to get in touch with these unfortunate people. I only hope they haven't done anything silly and got themselves into any trouble. Uh, yes, Minister. Yeah. Any joy? No, nothing. The same old clients. Not many of those. Oh, uh, one thing. The big chap, Trevor, uh -huh. he's been doing a lot of shopping this afternoon. Well, might mean something. I doubt it, though. Oh, well, off you go. Johnny, how long's this going on? It's been over a week now. I mean, there's my job and the kids and... <sighs> All right. Hello. Hello, Guy. Yeah, Johnny, what's up? Oh, uh, look, Guy, I'm not sure, but I think we've got him. There's obviously something going on. Yeah? A lot of visitors have turned up at the house, and just now a taxi drew up, and someone with a bandage round his head hurried into the house. Hey? difficult to see at this distance, but it could well be Nemerson. So what now? I'm going to try and get into the house. Look, you're mad. Get the police. No, you get round here as fast as you can. <laughs> Look, Johnny, listen. Oh, hell. Johnny, now listen. Uh, Mr. Luscombe? Yes. Uh, look, I, I'd like you to... Ministry of Numbers and Information. You're the last. You're late. Traffic hold up. Well, come on quick. You're just going to stop. Slip in at the back with me and be quiet. Why is it so dark? Oh, we see. This is a joyful occasion. Sharif, Sharif. Our leader, Sharif, has Sharif, returned. Sharif, we are gathered to give thanks. Sharif, Sharif, Sharif has survived Sharif, despite plots and gross medical neglect. Sharif! I do nothing but honor the deity that has spared my life. But the matter is not finished. Someone has attempted to will my death. That person is here now. Yes, we have a traitor amongst us. He must be punished. You. Terry. Standing in a joke with me. I didn't do anything. Why do you want to find him? That's all. Terry, what did you do? Just did his brakes. But why, Terry? Why? I should have thought that was obvious the way you and him have been carrying on. You must be punished. Have we a photograph of the traitor? I swear I'm innocent. I'm getting out of this. Trevor, grab him. Hold, Hold him. him. Stand him in the pentangle. Now, hand me the photograph. 
Or perhaps you'd like to deface it yourself. Now hold him! He must know! I am Sharif, the all-powerful. The God is having mysterious favor in my being. Stop this! What on earth do you think you're doing? What the hell is this? Who let him in? Tell you bloody fools. Oh, Christ, will you not have been a trespasser? Hold that man back! Continue the ceremony! Hurry, you don't! You're a raving mad, the lot of you! Especially you, Neverson! Don't speak like that to our Grand Templar! He's just a crazy computer programmer who's got you all fooled. Stop him! You're a fraud! A bloody fraud! Peter Gavin Neverson, H Department! Kill him! Kill him! Just saying. Lie still. You've had a rough time, old chap. He's coming round. Is he going to be all right? Oh, yes. A few broken ribs, a lot of bruising. He'll live. Where am I? Acute repair unit. The police brought you here. Police? Why? The guy I... told them where you were. They went to arrest Nemerson. Now, later, you must rest. No. What happened? They dragged you out just in time. They've got Nemerson. He's for the high jump. And the whole wretched business has been sorted out. The Home Office dealt with it. Barbara, your parents. Why did she do it? A young chap. One of the clerks in Dad's office didn't like him. He was a member of the group. Nemerson did it to get power over that group of nutters. I didn't like him. So, someone can subvert the almighty system just out of spite. Well, so much for the infallible computer. Oh, I don't know. We've all survived. All's well that ends well and all that. Right, like hell it is. <laughs> what about Barbara's father? What about Witherington? What's become of him? Any ideas, woman? Yeah, I found him lying in the road, nurse. Looked in a bad way, so I... Uh... Yes. Can you help me onto the couch with him? No, I... Right. There. Thank you. Right, I'll leave him with you. I hope he'll be all right. Well, I'm sure he will. I must see Dr. Lawler. Now lie back and be quiet. There's no Dr. Lawler here. Dr. Trowdery will see you soon. What have we got here, nurse? An old foreign gentleman. Looks exhausted. Taxi driver found him in the road. I can't see any injuries or anything. Mm, probably just worn out. Know anything about him? He keeps muttering, but I can't understand him. Here, let me try. Singh Saab, my doctor who? Kuch bhi kena ho, to aap hume keh sakte ho. Have we a Dr. Lola in acute repair nurse? Never heard of him. Barnstable SMU, perhaps, but I don't think so. Dr. Lola! Lola! Help me, nurse, quick! Poor old fellow, he's gone, I'm afraid. I wonder where he came from and what's happened to him to bring him to this stage. Doctor, look, under the turban. Good God, his head shaved. Doctor, he's white, only his face is brown. No wonder he couldn't understand me when I... Poor devil. Any papers on him, nurse? Identification? Well, only this piece of paper. I... It's got some writing on it, but I can't yeah, quite let make me it see. out. Ah, yes. What does it say? Just Mr. Singh. That's all. Mr. Singh. Mm -hmm. 
That was Number Discontinued, adapted by Barry Campbell from the novel Sorry, Wrong Number by Margaret Simpson. The part of Dr. Johnny Lawler was played by Julian Curry. Neville Jason played Dr. Ruhlman, Valerie Murray, Yvette, Benjamin Whitrow, Derek Witherington and Mr. Singh, Joan Matheson, Annette Witherington, and Tammy Ustinoff, Barbara Luscombe. Guy Luscombe was played by Henry Knowles, Slocum and the Home Secretary by William Edel, Joy and Mrs. Boone, Brenda Kay, Mr. Fitch and Gimlet, Jonathan Scott, Evans and Terry, Alaric Cotter, Miss Davis, Mary Elliot Nelson, Cresswell and the Gas Man, Malcolm Gerrard, Trevor, Nemerson and the First Civil Servant, Michael Tudor Barnes, Leela and the DIC Clerk, Jane Knowles, and Simon, Mr. Thomas, and the senior civil servant, Timothy Bateson. Dr. Chowdhury was played by Renu Setner. The music was composed at the BBC Radiophonic Workshop by Dick Mills. And the play was directed by Bernard Krzyzewski.